welcome uh, everyone. I suggested to have a discussion about uh, Walter Benjamin's uh, uh, critic of violence uh, tonight because, uh, uh, well, it's apparent to me uh, the relevance of the theme of violence and military violence in this terrible moment. And uh, I think uh, uh, Benjamin had uh, something very important to say about the relationship between uh, uh, violence uh, and the state, and uh, also about uh, alternatives to this uh, uh, violent frame that is the state. And uh, also uh, because uh, we can find uh, in, uh, in Benjamin some interesting suggestions on uh, how to deal with uh, this situation. And uh, I think uh, uh, Benjamin is also one of the philosophers uh, uh, that influenced uh, uh, David Graeber. We are uh, having a series uh, about uh, David Graeber and philosophy. Um, looking for uh, uh, the ideas that can help us to understand uh, David's very complex thought, uh, because I consider uh, him a great philosopher, even if uh, he would have uh, loved at this idea, um, and a very complex uh, one. And uh, looking at the philosophers uh, uh, that appear in his uh, work uh, can help us in understanding uh, this uh, complex thought. Um, one of the main ideas uh, of uh, David was uh, that revolution uh, should not be placed in a future. And uh, uh, also what, what at first, uh, drove me to David is the idea the, of alternatives to a project for revolution of the uh, um, elite having a, a project of the of how to build a revolution and this is something uh, uh, that connects uh, David and Walter Benjamin because uh, at the bottom of uh, their uh, thought uh, is uh, a peculiar conception of uh, time and of, of the relationship between uh, uh, present day and the future and the past. Uh, I think the most famous uh, thesis by Walter Benjamin is uh, that of the angle, angel that is uh, uh, driving, driving towards uh, uh, the future by a storm that is looking at the, at the past. And uh, uh, this, this thesis can be understood uh, uh, through what uh, Franz Rosenzweig said about, about the relationship between Judaism and uh, Christianism. He said uh, the two are necessarily in conflict, they will ever be, uh, but in the whole uh, uh, design of God, they must exist, both of them must exist, in as much uh, God gave to the uh, Christians the path uh, towards uh, light, but they are unable to see the light. So they, uh, they give the shoulders to the light and they are projected in a future they cannot see. And uh, whereas uh, the Jews are, uh, um, have, do have the light in the present day uh, in eternity. And that they, uh, to see it, they can, they have to go inside themselves. So there is no history in, 
in their time. Uh, the opposition is between uh, uh, present and eternal present and uh, history and uh, uh, the idea of progress, of future, of uh, uh, revolution as something that has to be built in, in the, for the future. Uh, you, uh, there was a funny advertisement uh, in, uh, in, in, Ita in Italy uh, about somebody who was uh, dieting and uh, his wife uh, told him, uh, you can have uh, the small potato today, you will have uh, the um, chicken uh, tomorrow. And this is, uh, uh, in a way, our idea of uh, uh, revolution. Today, you have the small potato and the dictator of the proletariat. And uh, in the future, you'll have uh, communism. Uh, Walter ben Benjamin and David uh, fought this idea uh, in the name of uh, uh, a conception of time that is uh, in the present that is uh, uh, the communist relationships are today. Uh, let's see these uh, relationships. And this is uh, uh, what Walter Benjamin in this essay calls uh, uh, pure means. Uh, let me see how is the analoid means in um, in the translation I used. And in Italian, it's pure means. That is uh, means that are not charged uh, by violence. And uh, those means are those of the uh, agreement, consensus, uh, human relationships that are not mediated by the, the law uh, and the uh, that are not mediated by the state. Uh, so this essay is uh, uh, important because uh, in the first part, uh, it proves uh, uh, why we need relationships that are not mediated by uh, the state and how the state is uh, fundamentally uh, anything but violence. Um, the, so I'll try to make a, a short uh, synthesis of the, of, the, of the essay so we can discuss it. Uh, um, Benjamin poses, uh, says violence, can be uh, addressed only if we uh, uh, look at uh, law and justice. In, in as much it concerns law, uh, violence is uh, um, a mean. And when it con we consider it as a mean, uh, we can see how circular is the argument uh, both of uh, natural law and uh, positive law. That is, uh, uh, natural law uh, connects uh, means and ends by saying uh, uh, good, uh, just ends justify means, make uh, just the means. And uh, uh, on, the other, on the other hand, uh, positive law, positive law, uh, says uh, uh, justified means, uh, uh, correct means uh, justify the ends. Uh, those two positions uh, in confounding, in connecting uh, uh, means and ends uh, are in a way the same, are the same circular argument. Uh, we cannot understand uh, violence as a mean 
until uh, we uh, don't separate, uh, split by uh, means and uh, ends, and consider ends uh, on the as a, on uh, concerning justice, and uh, uh, talk, but focus on means on violence as a mean. Uh, the question is whether uh, violence can be justified as a mean, not uh, no matter what the ends uh, we have, and no matter if uh, uh, this means this means uh, can justify the end uh, the the torture. So. We need, uh, says ben Benjamin, um, sorry. We need an independent criteria to justify, uh, to see if means, uh, violent means, means can be justified. Uh, in, on this regard, uh, we can consider two kinds of uh, violence, uh, start uh, departing from the uh, idea of positive law that it can exist sanctioned or unsanctioned force, sanctioned or unsanctioned uh, violence. Uh, this distinction uh, is not uh, assumed as a right by Benjamin. It's a uh, you, but it's useful to understand the nature of violence um, from, a, from the point of view of law. And uh, when we consider uh, this distinction between sanctioned and unsanctioned violence, uh, we can see... Corey, can I just come in and ask yes. you, what, what is the nature of violence? For Bainimi, uh, violence is a mean uh, in, in Benjamin, uh, Benjamin's analysis. And when we consider it as a mean, uh, it is uh, uh, either a mean that founds uh, the, the state, it's, uh, at the, it is at the foundation of the state, Hi, Florin. Welcome. Uh, hello. hello. Uh, I was think it, it is a foundation of the state. Uh, it has a lawmaking uh, uh, character, or uh, uh, it is uh, maintaining the state. Uh, the lawmaking uh, character of the law is uh, of the of violence, sorry, is the one we see in uh, uh, general strike, in political general strike, and uh, in uh, uh, in war. Uh, this character is the reason why, uh, even if war appears to be outside the law. Uh, always requires a uh, um, peace, peace ceremony and a peace treaty. Uh, the peace uh, ceremony is uh, actually the, uh, the event of the foundation of new law and uh, uh, is the event that, that proves how uh, the foundation of the state, of the borders, uh, of the relationships between states, is uh, uh, at the end of the day violence, uh, the lawmaking violence, um, and uh, this also uh, denounces, in a way, how the uh, sovereign uh, in the uh, modern state construction, uh, the sovereign that is outside the uh, constitution of the state, 
is uh, at the end of the day uh, a symbol of violence. Um, and the other uh, side of uh, violence is that uh, the one that preserves the law. And this is uh, uh, the kind of violence that is uh, expressed in uh, military conscription. Uh, military conscription, and this is one of the reasons why this text is so important now, uh, is uh, um, violence that maintains uh, the, the law that enforces the law and that creates uh, not the state in, in as much it's based on violence, but the state in as much it, it is the violent uh, creation of a, a, of a people, of a nation. And both of them are uh, uh, for Benjamin ethically inacceptable and uh, uh, they cannot be justified in uh, any way uh, because of a, uh, of a circular arg argument. They, it is uh, the violence that uh, funds, that creates the uh, state and the conditions that justify violence. Um, and uh, to these uh, uh, options, uh, this Benjamin, is extremely yeah. interesting, but I can't follow it because it's uh, always uh, interrupted by some bad uh, connection. I'm I'm sorry. I, I leave you now, and uh, I'm so happy I could be with you. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you too. May I go on? <laughs> okay. Uh, I can't so, even. Uh, the second uh, aspect of law is uh, of violence is law preserving function. Uh, and I, I lost, I got lost, sorry. Uh, but I think I said what, what I was interesting, interested in uh, uh, underlying about uh, this text. Uh, that continues with uh, uh, a discussion of uh, uh, Sorel's uh, uh, idea of a general strike uh, and uh, uh, of a, an idea of a, a violence, pure violence, a mythical, mythical violence that is uh, the violence that doesn't try to, uh, to found uh, a law, to found a state. Uh, is, it is just the violence that uh, the revolt that destroys the uh, present, the state and the uh, system of laws. And uh, um, with no uh, objective, because uh, any uh, objective in, this, in making a revolution, in destroying the state, uh, would be the uh, foundation of another system of law that means uh, another system of violence uh, uh, of uh, certified sanctioned violence. And uh, uh, this sanctioned violence is the problem. Uh, and even uh, uh, personal relationships and uh, baseline communism uh, that exists uh, despite the law, despite 
the violence that is uh, entailed in law uh, are uh, tainted by violence uh, when they are in inside uh, the frame of uh, of state law, uh, which means uh, uh, even contracts uh, be between uh, uh, two people or uh, uh, consent agreements uh, in a group uh, are tainted of violence uh, when they are enforced by law, uh, when uh, they require the threat of uh, uh, physical violence to defend them. Um, and this reminds me something that is uh, in the in uh, depth, the first 5,000 years uh, about uh, how the relationships uh, um, in uh, English villages, uh, typical of uh, middle age English villages, uh, were uh, uh, changed when uh, uh, the modern state uh, uh, affirmed itself. Uh, and it was not just about taxes, it was uh, about uh, uh, the system of uh, uh, mutual of debt and exchanges that were uh, uh, happened in the form of mutual aid in a community, you uh, got, uh, you got uh, a loan by uh, your neighbor because uh, uh, he was a friend and uh, it was uh, uh, given for granted that you would uh, have uh, given it back or given something else uh, back, uh, but everything was uh, based uh, on uh, mutual trust and uh, human relationships. When uh, uh, those uh, loans uh, and agreements started uh, to be enforced by law, um, everything changed and uh, it became uh, a way to uh, actually to destroy community. I, unfortunately, I didn't prepare uh, this quote from that, but uh, I can look for it uh, if you have patience. And uh, so I was very interested in these, uh, these true I ideas of the, um, connect David and this essay. Uh, one is uh, uh, that of uh, um, the opposition between uh, uh, human uh, relationships uh, and human agreements uh, that entails also uh, cheating and uh, playing and lying. Um, Benjamin says uh, uh, violence, uh, state violence uh, entered uh, human relationships when uh, it became uh, uh, forbidden and uh, uh, punishable to lie in an agreement. Uh, so the opposition between uh, human relationships uh, and pure means of agreement, non-violent uh, uh, means of agreement and uh, uh, contracts uh, enforced by law. That contracts uh, and agreements that exist on the basis of the threat of, uh, um, of a punishment of, uh, uh, of a state that will uh, jump in and uh, uh, force you to leave uh, your house uh, because you are indebted and that will force and force uh, uh, the, the contact, uh, the contact
content of the contract. And uh, uh, the other was this, uh, this idea of uh, uh, time of mythic violence uh, that is uh, not in meant to found, to create a state in uh, opposition to uh, the dictature of the proletariat and uh, of in opposition to uh, building uh, an elite and um, avant-garde uh, building a uh, future for uh, building communism for the future of uh, humanity. And this is connected uh, with uh, the idea of uh, seeing what communism is uh, in present days, what which human relationships uh, and human agreements are uh, in present day, and uh, of uh, looking at the possibilities of uh, acting as if uh, we were already free. So this is my uh, introduction and my proposal of a reading for this text. And uh, uh, Avi, thank you for uh, uh, having something to say about it. <laughs> So can I ask questions? <laughs> yeah, uh, Avi had asked for uh, for uh, the floor, but I know oh, I was I just can... I was yeah. just clapping. I was just clapping. So Nika. Okay, so can I have just clarification about Sorel? So I'm just read the quote. Taking up occasional statement by Marx, Sorel reject every kind of program of utopia in a world of lawmaking for the revolutionary movement. With the general strike, all these fine things disappeared. The revolution appears as a clear, simple revolt, and no place is reserved either for the sociologist or for the elegant amateurs of social reform or for the intellectuals who have made their profession to think for the proletariat. So I, I didn't read Sorel, General Strike, if somebody did read, read it. Um, I just need more clarification, uh, or maybe you know, understand in Ziba what, what does he, what does he mean? Oh, well, I haven't read uh, Sorel either. Uh, just some lines uh, here and, and there, but uh, I'm not, <laughs> I cannot uh, talk of him. Uh, so if, if there's somebody I remember somebody that. Who... What page is it, quickly? Sorry, I'm going um, to it's 246. It's father, it said that Sorel, has explained with highly indigenous arguments the extent to which such a rigorous conception of the general strike per se is capable of diminishing the incidence of actual violence in revolutions. It's, it's actually will be interesting to read him in one of the reading group because he's always popping up in the David's text. <laughs> and I still kind of, I, I can't make, it's not coming together for me. Well, uh, Sorel was uh, uh, an important anarchist uh, thinker. Uh, I totally dislike him. Uh, he ended up um, he ended up in quite, in my opinion, fascist uh, positions. Uh, uh, should... with his uh, uh, idealization of myth and of, sorry, uh, you should? I, I didn't uh, understand the word, you said fascist? Yeah, quite fascist. Uh, he, uh, 
how to say overrated uh, the uh, the idea of myth uh, of mythical violence that is also a, a theme of this essay um, and uh, there is a an issue with the idea of uh, people uh, that is very well uh, described in uh, There Never Was a, a West. Um, when you start, uh, the problem is with sovereignty. Uh, it's quite simple to have a, a king and to say, this is the sovereign. Sovereign uh, means, uh, um, also means a foundational, uh, feature of the state um, in it, also in Thomas Hobbes uh, description uh, conception uh, the sovereign is uh, the one to which everybody uh, transfers its uh, strength its uh, force its power uh, in order to have peace the condition for this is that the sovereign is outside society, outside the, the state. It can be the foundation of the state in as much it is uh, outside it. Uh, and this is quite easy when uh, you have uh, a king. Uh, this is a uh, uh, theoretical and political disaster when uh, the sovereign is the people because uh, you have uh, a foundation uh, uh, of the state that is outside the state, but at the same time, it coincides with the state, which means uh, the only solution is uh, to idealize the people to idealize a general will, to think it exists such, such a thing as a general will. Uh, and uh, the people is something different uh, from the multitude of uh, uh, human beings that uh, live in a group, in a, in a territory, in uh, somewhere. Um, I, on purpose, I was very basic in describing uh, uh, a, hum a group of human beings uh, sorry, Abby, if you want to say something, say something, don't, don't write in the chat. Sorry, it was just a little side note, I was just rereading that page and just put my thoughts down. I'm sorry to interrupt what you're saying. Yeah, it's very me. I have the same question because I was reading the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe somebody sorry. should read. Maybe you should read it, Avi, because everybody's read, reading. All themselves. right. Sorry. Yeah. All I was saying, I would just you ask, what does that phrase mean from that that person that was quoted? And all I got from it was within this particular idea that Benjamin classifies between the two different types of strike, one kind of strike is within the context of the state and is just trying to extort some particular benefits, you know, like increase mm -hmm. my pension um, or whatever that is. Um, so there's no uh, the, can, the violence on which the state is based continues that's unquestioned, whereas mm -hmm. how he classifies a general strike, which seems oh, to be a very philosophical yeah. way rather than an ethnographic way, um, is that that point you're just standing outside of violence within the state context. I mean, that's what I got from it. And I guess yeah. that makes sense if you consider violence not as an objective category, but as a socially made contextual thingy, but, but maybe I missed the point. Yeah, uh, here violence is uh... Uh, totally considered as a philosophical concept. And uh, um, 
In the previous pages, uh, Benjamin used the uh, general strike as uh, one of the three examples that prove uh, the nature of uh, the lawmaking uh, nature of violence. Um, he says uh, uh, strike is the only uh, violence uh, uh, toward um, natural ends uh, that is allowed inside the, the state. Um, natural ends are those that are not sanctioned by law. Uh, while uh, uh, like what what is natural oh the, like, no it's not about natural law it's, it is about positive law inside the frame of positive law uh, it exists uh, the difference uh, uh, in legal theory uh, says benjamin is a bit is only between uh, uh, sanctioned violence and unsanctioned violence. Uh, sanctioned violence uh, um, is, uh, is only the one that is enforced by the state under uh, a legal system, inside a legal system. So is uh, uh, is the violence uh, uh, enforced through a judgment uh, that is based on laws that is uh, uh, that are based uh, fundamentally based on violence? This is what uh, Benjamin is uh, demonstrating here. But uh, the point in legal theory is sanction in positive uh, law uh, legal theory is uh, uh, legal violence, legitimate violence, is uh, only the one that is uh, uh, enforced through a legal process, that is uh, enforced through a process that is uh, uh, sanctioned by law, that is determined by law. Uh, am I clear? Uh, I didn't get it. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. I'm lost. So it's illegal. It's a uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, that's uh, that's enforced maybe, by the law. Not illegitimized. Clear. No, no. I just uh, yeah. Uh, what are things for me? When uh, when the state uh, decides, uh, when a judge uh, decides uh, that uh, somebody has to go in on in jail, uh, putting somebody in jail is violence. And uh, uh, another term for violence is uh, law enforcement. This uh, presence of the word force inside the enforcement is uh, telling the real meaning of, uh, of it. Uh, one fundamental concept of legal theory is uh, uh, no law is valid if it, not, if it is not enforced. Uh, so the, the essence of the, of the law is uh, uh, the threat of uh, violence that is uh, behind it. And uh, the violence that is be behind it is that it can potentially be enforced by our sentence. Uh, so this kind of violence, uh, the, the one that is the enforcement of law, is uh, uh, legitimate la violence uh, in uh, positive law opinion theory, um, positive law th theory says uh, 
the violence uh, that is uh, exerted uh, while uh, putting some, somebody in jail is legitimate violence because uh, it has been uh, uh, implemented through a uh, process, through a trial. In, in Italian, uh, trial is processo. So, um, but it, it is uh, actually a process uh, that means uh, there are steps uh, that are uh, uh, established by, by law. There are rules established by law, and this, uh, there is a, a sentence by a judge that is uh, uh, inside the framework of a legal system. So for a positive law theory, uh, the violence that is legitimate is uh, the one that is uh, grounded on uh, a legal process uh, created by the system of uh, of, of the laws. Uh, was it more clear? Yeah, that's, that's clear. And but he's talking here about like that. It's that's clear. So there is a positive law, but he, uh, he also yeah. talking about natural law. So among all these forms uh, of violence permitted by both natural law and positive law, not one is free of the gravity problematic nature already indicated of all legal violence. So yeah. it's a, the, the problematic nature of uh, all legal violence is that it uh, mixes uh, ends and, uh, and, uh, um, and means. Okay. Uh, that is uh, uh, either uh, positive law says uh, uh, the ends uh, that are pursued through a legal process are justified, uh, or uh, uh, natural law says uh, uh, the means that uh, aim to a just end are justified. So you can have a just war because uh, it is a, a, a war, I mean, that aims to a just yeah. end that is yeah. uh, the yeah. defeat of the ugly and bad uh, enemy. And coming back now to what Avi was asking, so mm -hmm. there is a general strike in which uh, uh, this revolutionary moment when the people come together to question the very nature of violence, mm -hmm. yeah? So in this case, the, their general strike is violence, but it, it's violence outside of this uh, mm. natural law and positive law, all of the systems that's created by um, legalities. So I don't know how to call them. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Uh... And so in, in this case, I don't still understand the comment of Walter Benjamin that I quote in the beginning. Mm -hmm. so, can I ask very simple what what uh, I can't find what was his position about Sarel because he's like saying like he's uh, saying uh, uh, let me go back uh, strike is uh, one of the examples of violence that uh, has a law making uh, function so it establishes a new system of law uh, but if Establishing any system of law is uh, bad, in as much any system of law is violence, because the system of law is based on violence. Uh, so even the general strike that aims to uh, get any goal, any uh, to obtain anything. Uh, through violence, because strike is violence. Um, any general strike that tries to establish a new order is uh, uh, establishing a new order by, based on violence. 
Yeah, I that is why that David was the, saying that I don't remember when, where that uh, uh, all the all the unlawful behavior is based on crossing the laws that was established some times ago by some mm -hmm. revolutions that was doing like unlawful thing by changing the law that was before them. <laughs> so it, it, yeah. It, Mm -hmm. So that's a directly uh, like kind of summary of what Walter Benjamin was saying here. Yeah. I should find this quote from David. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know what is it. But then coming I, back to your first thing, sorry. Uh, in, I can read from the page. Uh, the, just a little clarification there, Simona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just to double check, because I finished work at six and then I read everything quickly. But the differentiation there, I'm not particularly interested in it, but just to clarify something, is that a strike, uh, for example, if I demand my pension from my boss, yeah, then I, that in theory, I have the legal means to enforce that. So it's an accepted form of violence within that structure, which is different from Sorrell's idea of a general strike where you stand outside that, but then Walter Benjamin is saying, well, if the purpose of that strike is just to establish a new legal hegemony, then it becomes sanctioned violence itself, right? I just wanted to clarify. No, uh, actually, the idea of a revolutionary general strike was quite uh, diffused at that time. And both Sorel and Benjamin are criticizing this idea. Uh, and they are saying, almost the same thing uh, in the previous pages. Uh, Benjamin pointed out how uh, the state allows, uh, because uh, it cannot uh, do differently, accepts the existence of strikes as an enforcement of uh, uh, workers' uh, rights, um, but uh, would, uh, but is against the um, general strike as a re revolutionary act. Uh, let me look for the quote. So we. But that's exactly maybe... what uh, I just said. He also said the same. Yeah. Thing. If, uh, the, if the strikes are just trying to increase the pension in the framework of, because we all agree that the pension should exist in the, the law, so then it's fine. But if, for example, uh, the revolution would say that, I don't know, no, everybody have to have pension, despite the fact that they reach certain age, uh, then uh, that will be a different story, yeah? Uh, the point for Benjamin is that uh, it is, uh, uh, it is violence. It is uh, uh, legal. It is legal. Uh, it is the only case uh, uh, where the state allows uh, a subject to uh, pursue is its uh, ends inside the state without uh, uh, directly ap making appeal to the uh, to the law. I mean, you could uh, uh, enforce your right uh, to a decent uh, uh, salary, just uh, uh, saying uh, there is or there should be a law uh, saying that there is a minimum salary that I have uh, uh, a right to receive. Um, you can when you uh, want something, uh, you can either uh, say it is lawful uh, and I ask the state to enforce my right, my lawful uh, right, my lawful entitlement, entitlement to, to this uh, thing, or uh, you can uh, fight for it. Uh, Benjamin says the only case in which it is allowed inside uh, the uh, state monopoly of violence to uh, 
fight for one's rights is uh, uh, the one uh, allowed to trade unions to have strikes to uh, get more salary or uh, pensions or uh, anything. Uh, Benjamin says uh, that's okay, but this is uh, actually extortion because uh, uh, what's uh, at, uh, the basis of it is uh, nothing but force. Uh, the strike is uh, an opposition of uh, forces. You uh, prove uh, the force of uh, the power of uh, the uh, workers by um, uh, refusing to work. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this make a damage to the uh, master. So he will be obliged to comply with your requests if you are strong enough. It's uh, a confrontation, confrontation of the uh, forces of powers, just like uh, a war between uh, uh, states it is class war at the end of the day. Uh, Benjamin says, okay, uh, let's uh, be clear on that. It is violence, even if it's just for the uh, extortion of uh, uh, better salaries or of uh, pensions or of, or of any other uh, workers. Uh, advantage. Uh, let me, I found uh, the um, quote, so let me read it. Strike, uh, sorry. Strike shows this objective contradiction in the legal situation. Organized labor is, apart from the state, probably the only legal subject entitled to exercise violence. The right to strike constitutes in the view of labor which is opposed to that of the state, the right to use force in attaining certain, certain ends. The antithesis between the two conceptions emerges in all its bitterness in the face of a revolutionary general strike. In this, labor will always appeal to its right to strike and the state will call this appeal an abuse it is the exercise of a right in order to overthrow the legal system that, is, that has conferred it. In a strike, the state fears precisely the, that function of violence that is the object of this study and, and the only, as the only secure foundation of its critique. The, uh, sorry, the ability to found and modify legal conditions. Uh, this is uh, uh, which page? Uh, I'm looking for it because uh, I accepted the quote. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, found it. It's two two hundred thirty nine. Uh, thirty nine uh, forty. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, So, yeah, then this case, uh, yeah. so we have general strike and we have like this legal strikes. Yeah. In this case, it's interesting that Occupy was, uh, of course, general strike because uh, they refused to, to do any, to put up any demand and they were actually trying to rearrange the whole laws uh, by redefined in the, the terms like death, for example, and so on. Uh, but in the same time, it was an exercise of how to, to do that without impose violence, just the other means. Yeah, and uh, this idea of not making requests is a very, uh, this essay, you have a general strike without the uh, will to uh, create new laws, new rules, 
without uh, lawmaking. Uh, Abby? Oh, I, I feel like we got to, no, I mean, for me anyway, I got to a really good point with bringing the uh, into focus through the idea of Occupy, because it gave me an example to work with. But I've got a question on a slightly different tangent. So whenever you're ready, I guess that'll be now. That's why you put me out. So um, what was I going to ask? OK, so I feel like people that read anarchist theory and participate in anarchist practices at some point um, are not going to find Benjamin's general gist to be that uh, difficult to accept, right? It might be more difficult if you work within that. I just want to put that out there. But my question is, so to me, Benjamin points out that each iteration, each new hegemony, or, you know, you have your little rupture, or your big rupture, and a new uh, legal system, so for each new iteration within that flow, there's a new referee, right? He actually uses the word referee, which is nice because that's the one that I like to use. And that's sort of, to me, where Graeber picks up is the concept of the referee. And so ethnographically, that's the thing that I always pay attention to is referees inserting themselves into context uh, and trying to arbitrate as an abstract uh, outside non-human, relate non Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, my question is, um, if that is correct understanding, then how to stop a referee is not something that I have an issue with. Uh, how to kill a referee is not something I have an issue with. Uh, the question becomes, what does it mean to live without a referee? Um, I need a bit of brainstorming. I, I but that's my you. Question. What do you mean by a referee? So a referee is a third party that you invest with the power of violence to enforce uh, a trust relationship. So, for example, if you have halloumi cheese in Cyprus, where I grew up, uh, then you have the EU says that halloumi cheese has to be made in Cyprus and we're going to put a label on it or it's going to be called fair trade or it's going to be some form of there's many ways to give an example. I'm just working the ones that I know, right? So is there's a third party from the top down who is keeping accountability from the top down. So it's a question of trying to navigate trust. So do I trust this piece of cheese that I'm eating is legitimate halloumi cheese made in Cyprus, made from whatever ingredients made by real Cypriot people? Um, so there is a... I'm not saying, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, an, an answer here or an articulate one, but the question of how does it feel to say that you would remove uh, top-down third parties who mediate your life? Because to me, that is the argument that I hear from David Graeber moved, building on Benjamin's point. And any concrete examples or philosophy about it. I'm just asking in a very selfish way because yeah. I'm trying to gather them. Well, I don't know if somebody wants to jump in. Okay. Uh, okay, just, I don't know, yeah. we're dealing with security, aren't we? We kind of want to feel a security in our lives. And I guess those sort of, those certificates on the cheese, but it's real mozzarella, it's real halloumi. It makes you feel you can trust it, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Security, I don't know. Could be security, it also could be a uh, sense, you know, something, uh, something that, uh, or meaning. Uh, so I think in this uh, I, uh, book about on kings with Marshall Solomons, uh, they're describing societies in which they always basically it's always some hierarchical structure they just could be built differently for example some communities could you know have a referee as a son or as like a bear <laughs> and then everybody equal towards this bear or towards the sun 
like basically the problem start when the instead of sun we have some Putin or I don't know some kind of uh, uh, some some guy or group of guys uh, uh, who or like you know some people uh, who is sovereign and who is making the law. So that's uh, my understanding of uh, uh, that removing killing the referee is not an option actually. Do you think there needs to be a referee? Like, if I understand correctly what uh, Adi mean by referee, because uh, like an example with UN, United Nations or whoever give the labels, this is a bureaucratic structure that's uh, coming back to that as uh, uh, it's, uh, has, it's legitimate because of violence. But yeah. if you talk about sun, then there is a different story the sun power based on, uh, you know, storytelling <laughs> or uh, kind of, or, or about, uh, on, on culture, on much different ways of uh, creating uh, power structures. But the power structures always exist. There is no society, human society without power structures. Yeah. Is that, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I meant to put my hand up. Yeah, so what I was talking about exactly was the UN case that you were talking about, or example. The other case, is that what Benjamin was talking about in relation to mythical violence or something? Because that part I didn't actually understand. Yeah, I didn't get that. Because that helps me. I can look at that some more. Thanks. Uh, so this point about referees uh, only makes sense uh, in the context uh, of uh, impersonal markets. And uh, impersonal markets uh, are uh, exactly the kind of uh, human relationships uh, that can exist only if they are mediated by the state. Um, and even in, uh, uh, in a market, uh, condition, situation, uh, trust cannot be totally removed. Personal trust, uh, it's uh, even in the theory of games, uh, it changes everything when uh, you uh, think of a lasting relationship. Uh, an exchange with somebody you will uh, see again uh, tomorrow, or uh, when uh, it is with a total stranger that we, you will never meet again. Uh, so the certification of uh, mozzarella uh, by a third uh, referee, by a referee, makes sense when uh, you sell uh, Parmesan is a better example. I'll tell you why later. Uh, when you sell Parmesan uh, to somebody that will never meet you and uh, that you will never meet. And uh, I'm referring to Parmesan because, uh, uh, because I'm from Emilia Romagna, that is the land of Parmesan. And uh, uh, we have uh, strict laws about uh, what Parmesan cheese is, and uh, uh, this uh, trademark uh, is only uh, valuable in Italy and maybe in Europe, because abroad uh, Parmesan, Parmesan is a trademark for something that is quite like the actual uh, Parmesan, but is guaranteed by a referral as uh, if it was the actual Parmesan. So uh, what I mean is uh, uh, in as much laws are uh, uh, grounded on violence, they also are stupid. They are, uh, the ground for uh, uh, deprivation of complexity of 
human relationships of uh, uh, act, the actual trust that came from the complexity of human relationships. I don't know if I was. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just going to chip in there because I disagree about uh, cheese. But um, I, I want to learn more about the mythical part. But just before we go to that, the point of raising halloumi, uh, which I'm very familiar with, and I would bet a lot of money that it would run for Parmesan, is that the whole trademark um, issue is completely and entirely a made up thing. So for example, in Cyprus, because you have a halloumi that has to be made in Cyprus to be consumed by the rest of the world, uh, this created very quickly a monopoly amongst cheesemakers within Cyprus, um, step one. So the economy didn't actually help for the general people. Step two was that the demand for halloumi was so high that they actually had to break all of the laws. Halloumi is meant to be a cheese without cow's milk. They had to start importing cows, uh, which destroyed the local environment because there's not enough water to feed cows within Cyprus. And so now you actually eat cow cheese halloumi, which is said to be from Cyprus because it's made in Cyprus in another country. So you fuck the local environment. You don't eat real halloumi cheese in England, uh, but it's all got the brand of halloumi. So the, the, for, for me, the first step is to accept that all of those referees never actually provide any trust at all. My question is, um, how to grow something else instead of that, rather than tell people in Cyprus to eat halloumi and tell people in England to eat cheddar, um, which is something else. But anyway, I just wanted to clarify that because I reckon Parmesan is probably bullshit as well. I was, yeah. Sorry, not you. No, I was looking for a quote about uh, uh, mythical violence, but uh, while I'm looking for it, uh, you can talk. No, it seems like that. I don't know the monopolies and the, the scale of relationships that sort of I don't know bring with it the responsibility of violence. You know that so you sort of. But the restrictions on when you lose, I don't know, it's like qualitative and quantitative research. You lose the sort of the essence and sort of you end up, I don't know, pulling in and out of focus. But does that justify violence? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I don't know about the mythical. I didn't really get that. I didn't understand these, these absolute violence in the myth. Maybe it's page 248, huh? mythical, mythical violence is an archetypical form, is a mere, mere manifestation of the gods. This one, not a means to their the, end. Yeah, the opposition, as far as I understood it, is uh, between uh, divine violence that is uh, pure manifestation of, uh, of God and uh, uh, and uh, if I can find the quote uh, uh, just destroys the law oh okay uh, what, what page uh, I I was looking at the Italian translation so ah it's difficult uh, so far from Inaugurating at uh, page uh, ta, 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 249, far from inaugurating a pure sphere, the mythic manifestation of immediate violence show itself fundamentally identical with all legal violence and turns suspicion concerning the latter into certainty of the perniciousness of its historical function the destruction of which thus becomes obligatory. The ver this very task of destruction poses again, ultimately, 
the question of acute immediate violence that might be able to call a halt to mythic violence. Just um, so if I uh, remind me what page, sorry, I got lost there. Uh, 249 at the end. Yeah, it's the, the beginning of the paragraph of the only paragraph in uh, 249. Uh, This is a, a very difficult uh, part of the essay, uh, but in as much I understood it, uh, I cannot swear I did, uh, it opposes uh, divine, uh, the divine uh, 215. Uh, this divine power uh, is not only attested by only, uh, no. So it's a bad uh, quote. Yeah. I, I didn't. It's uh, a second paragraph. Yeah. But is in as much I understood it, I don't guarantee it's an opposition with between uh, uh, mythical violence uh, when uh, used and forced by uh, by people uh, that becomes uh, just uh, uh, like the legal violence uh, that is a uh, uh, law making violence and uh, the uh, divine violence that is uh, uh, the one destructing the present state of things uh, the the one that is uh, only meant to uh, destroy without uh, uh, any aim to build, to without any project. Uh, going back to what we were saying before uh, starting recording, um, the core difference is uh, between uh, the idea of project of a, a, a plan that needs to be enforced by uh, somebody and uh, uh, the absence of project and the uh, perpetual uh, building of uh, negotiations of uh, the infinite uh, play of uh, mutual negotiations and uh, mutual uh, creation of uh, uh, people and uh, um, agreements that is opposed to the to the state. Uh, so, to the complexity of the. Uh, uh, of human relationships as opposed uh, to uh, the constituted power. Uh, if you, if I may, it's uh, the opposition between the constituent power and the constituted power uh, in uh, Tony Negri's uh, uh, description. Uh, what stays uh, volatile uh, mobile and uh, um, what's uh, written in, in stone as a law, what is uh, uh, in a way blocked and uh, uh, and founded on a system that is uh, uh, created uh, on the basis of of the uh, violence and on the basis of cutting out complexity. But this is uh, uh, just a uh, um, random thought, uh, I see. I, I'm not sure I didn't understand this part about uh, mythic and uh, divine violence.
Yeah, it looks like uh, it's exactly what you're saying. Like, so the divine power is not only attested by the religious tradition, but is also found in the present day life in a, at least one sanctioned manifestation, the educative power, which in its perfected form stand outside the law is one of its manifestations. So that's, uh, yeah, that's basically like if we, uh, if it's what David was saying, if we are a revolution is uh, changing in the common sense, that's the educate, educated power. So for example, suddenly everybody would decide that this is not this, but this is that. And the whole human relationship will be set up differently. If, if enough people will, will change their opinion, for example, we decide that cannibalism is bad, we're not gonna eat each other. And so we don't need the law force to, to stop us from eating each other, for example. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> still in depth, uh, it's uh, fascinating the description of uh, the conscious refusal uh, by uh, European of slavery, how slavery just got Outload, outload uh, naturally without uh, uh, a state establishing that it is illegal. Uh, on the contrary, uh, the state uh, was a force uh, trying to uh, push forms of slavery, alternative forms of slavery that could be acceptable for uh, for people uh, in uh, in Eurasia because uh, actually slavery was outlawed outlawed in uh, the whole Eurasia I think in the Middle Age. Um, yeah, and that's coming back to to anthropology where like we have this structures of society that very complex creation and law is only kind of one force and probably the the less intriguing and more dumb force of, from the old it's so cool yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting and i just kind of understand it was it was really difficult for me i tried to read it but it was difficult now kind of clear abby uh, your your hand uh, up. Thanks, Simona. I mean, I'll just keep throwing in interjections. Uh, so stop me if there are too many. Um, so how does one? I mean, I'm sure we all do it and experiment and blah blah blah. But as a broad question, what does it mean to be able to allow yourself to be vulnerable? without uh without worrying about how to be on, like making this is what i see as the forum or direct democracy kind of thing is to be able to be vulnerable um in uh a shared context that accepts that right because to be vulnerable is to be trusting and to be try to be as honest as possible um, without trying to have the security of hiding in some shared delusion uh, or accountability structure. I don't know, there's something I've just been thinking about a lot recently. Um, the, the liberation that comes from vulnerability rather than vulnerability being a a scary thing. It relates to trust. I don't know. I, 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 it was just a thought that I've been having. And I want to share out loud, and I'm not an expert in being vulnerable, so uh, that's the that's, that's, that's put that out there. Why should uh, one accept to be vulnerable? Uh, I think this is a, a badly uh, framed question. Uh, be either I vulnerable. Accept that. I accept that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry. Uh, in in my opinion, it's uh, 
rather uh, about being uh, it's different to be uh, strong enough to accept uh, diversity uh, but it's uh, something totally different um, still in this uh, quote from uh, Franz uh, Rosenzweig I was uh, uh, telling of uh, before uh, sorry when I was uh, quite young I was uh, my project for a uh, um, bachelor, bachelor degree thesis was about Judaism and uh, how uh, Jewish uh, thinkers uh, had thought uh, about national state and uh, uh, the identity of nations uh, being uh, something different from uh, uh, the German nation, the Italian nation, and uh, um, I was uh, my professor uh, told me you should uh, uh, read uh, uh, Scholem and Benjamin and uh, Franz Rosenzweig, and uh, you, of course, you should learn uh, he Hebrew and German, and uh, it's uh, given for granted that uh, you as a um, candidate uh, bachelor uh, should learn to know uh, English and French. And I said, uh, okay, maybe it's too much for me. Uh, I know Latin, I can study Spinoza. <laughs> um, but actually it was too much for a bachelor degree, but he was right. Uh, this is the group of thinkers, uh, Rosenzweig, Benjamin Scholem, and uh, uh, Bloch, who thought about uh, uh, this uh, constellation of thoughts and uh, their critic criticism of uh, national states is uh, uh, deep and and really fundamental. And uh, it is uh, uh, not only about the idea of a project, of uh, uh, building a state, of building a, um, a power that is supposedly of the people, of the proletarians, or uh, whatever, of an image of uh, uh, the general will that is. Uh, just what is represented by the elite. Uh, more in depth, it was uh, about uh, the basis of consensus. Um, and what's peculiar of uh, Judaism is that you are not expected to uh, have a conversion. Um, Christianism, is uh, about history. Uh, the Messiah for Christians came uh, in the in an historical point of time. There is a before and a after uh, the coming of Jesus, and uh, you are saved uh, the moment you accept that Jesus has come in this moment of history and uh, um, that he is the Messiah and uh, the task of Christians is to expand uh, this uh, belief in uh, uh, this one truth that is uh, Christ is the Savior. Um, while if you don't have a conversion, if you don't have the task of uh, uh, getting everybody uh, to believe in your belief, uh, you can accept uh, 
multiplicity. You can accept uh, diversity. You, you don't need everybody to believe exactly what you believe. You can accept uh, that uh, everybody, each one has uh, his mind, his uh, interpretation of the uh, Torah, uh, that you can accept that uh, even uh, the law that has been uh, uh, the interpretation of uh, uh, the divine law that has been given by this uh, uh, group of uh, uh, wise, wise men uh, is the um, voice of God, but even there are other voices of God, there are other interpretations that are uh, uh, equally valid uh, and that will be valid in the future. Uh, the key point uh, for me is not just being accepting of, uh, to be vulnerable. It is uh, accepting that uh, you don't need uh, everybody to uh, agree with uh, that Christ is the savior, that there is only one truth, that you don't need to uh, convert everybody to your truth. You just need uh, to take agreements uh, and to uh, um, agree on the rules uh, of uh, uh, of behavior in this group, be in this time, how we do this thing uh, together now. Uh, I was long and Nika was asking for the floor. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I also interested to know the other names and maybe we can read Morris Bloch because um, yeah, that's a very important person also maybe in your philosophical series or somehow we can we can in, in, do that but uh, I, I want to say that uh, to my knowledge Judaism is not such a peaceful uh, you know um, religion and first of all they constantly was fighting with each other badly like you know it's just so many stories how uh, Litvak like Lithuanian uh, uh, was uh, given to authorities uh, all this Hasidim and so on and so forth. It's true that uh, Judaism is dialogical and it's encouraged to argue with each other and all uh, there is not dogmatism as in Christianity as we know. But it's um, so what I wanted to propose because you started from this concept of time that is really interesting and uh, uh, I had lots of questions but maybe because we are now already like much longer than we generally are. Maybe we can, uh, you can give us the names of who, who, or like short text, who is, um, who is good to talk about uh, in the conception of time in this relationship of uh, future and present, because uh, to my knowledge, Judaism is also messianic religious, first of all, and uh, this, following the, the 600 something rules in Judaism is exactly because you have to do things here now in order the future to come, the future that we all want. So at least that was my understanding of uh, Judaism. So we're all waiting for Messiah. It's uh, uh, said that if every Jew in the world uh, will uh, have a correct Shabbat in one day, then the Mash Mashiach will come. So that's uh, that's what I kind of think about that, and I don't think Judaism is particularly uh, something that can save us all. As a Jewish person, I would just add to what Nick is saying, which is that philosophers have some very nice ideals about things. <laughs> I think I got what I got. The general point is the idea of universalism versus pluralism, right? But yeah. They just used a weird, <clears throat> weird religious example. 
Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Um, I think I can find the quote from uh, Rosenzweig I was uh, referring to. Uh, if you allow me one minute. Um, anyway, uh, Rosenzweig is uh, the star of a uh, uh, salvation in, in English. In German, it's uh, the, the that Stern der Erlosung. Uh, the Erlosung is a, uh, in Italian, it's uh, translated as uh, redemption. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I uh, would translate a conference uh, about uh, this, uh, about it because it's useless that I listen to it and repeat to you, but it was a really one, wonderful one. So shall we wrap up? I'll send you the quote on the email. So it's easier. Even this quote from Paulus, about uh, acting as if is uh, quite interesting. Cool. Thank you so much, Simona. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and yeah, so let me stop.